Hi guys, welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always, I thank you very much for choosing to spend a little time with me. I am back to normal, I think. Um, so thank you everybody for your comments about my not feeling well last week. Um, this week, what are we talking about? I have an update for you on my gray corduroy pants that I was talking about last week. They are the pants, the All Well Workshop studio pants, I believe is what they're called. Um, as you will recall, <laughs> I did a little alteration to this pant and it ended up giving me a lot of, I just had a lot of excess in the back of the pants. So a lot of you guys, I had several comments with different um, suggestions for how to fix that. And I thought I would just show you really quickly how I fixed it in this pattern. So here you go. So this is the back piece for my All Well Studio Pants. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see, but you can see my original cut line was here. And this, where it gets narrower, is where I scooped it out. Um, I realize now what I should have done is something more like this. I should have sliced it right about here and just spread this out a half an inch. That would have given me more distance between here and here, which is what I needed without messing up the back of the pant leg. So here we have the gray pant that I showed you last week and I have um, undone the inseam just to right about here. Um, and now I have it inside out and right sides together. I'm gonna try to line up these pant legs as best I can. This is the back side and lay it as flat as I can. And then I'm gonna use this um, different pant pattern. This one is the Pattern Emporium Harem Pants. And I know this fits me already really well, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, I can see that this hip measurement is fine. And also, I can see that the leg is fine. I have plenty of room in the leg. So, I'm just gonna line this up with my crotch point here. And I'm gonna get this as flat as I can. It's not gonna lay completely flat, but you can see there's a pretty big difference here. And like I said, I can see that this side is off the paper, so I have plenty of room there. I'm just going to mark this, mark this, according to this line. And then when I get down to here, we'll just get this out of the way and lay this a little more flat. And I can see it's really gonna come right into the seam line right here. My pant line is down here. So that is a pretty weird looking curve. So I'm gonna take my ruler right down here to hopefully you'll be able to see that. This is where my seam line, you can see where my crease is there. That's where my seam line was. I put this right here and see if we can't curve that out a little bit more like that. Yeah, that looks good. So now I should be able to sew right up this line and that should get rid of a fair amount of that extra bagginess in the seat. Okay, so that is the gray pants fixed. Here's a picture of them as they are now. I think you can see in the picture they are considerably better than they were. I apologize for the sort of dark photos. It's very cloudy today. Um, so, yeah, so that alteration kind of worked. <laughs> I think at the end of the day what I should have done is gone down one size and made that um, small like half inch or even three quarters of an inch alteration to the crotch depth that I showed you in the very beginning of that tutorial. I think when you're using um, a stiffer fabric like this, it, it's not ideal for elastic waist pants in the first place, but if you're going to do it, 
it needs to be a pant that has a pretty small amount of ease. It's obviously not going to be no ease, but you need to have as little excess fabric gathering at the waist and hips as possible. So I don't think there's anything wrong with this pattern. I think I could have easily solved the crotch problem by thinking about it a little bit longer than I did originally. Um, on the other hand, it's not my favorite pant either, so I'm not going to make it again, but I'm not going to say don't make it because I don't think there's, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with this pattern. Okay, so I'm not going to make it again, which means that the pink corduroy is now being like relegated to the Eve pants from Merchant and Mills, which I have made before. Um, I think I said this last week, I made those pants before in one of my first videos for this channel. So I'm going to say it's not... A great video <laughs> it was recorded on my iPhone so the sound is weird anyways uh, if I'll, I'll link that video below if I can find it uh, you can just fast forward to the end of the video if you want to see a picture of those pants that's the only picture I have of those pants so um, that's what I'm gonna do with my pink corduroy and I am gonna work on that for next week as you can see I am wearing my purple turtleneck this is the sweatshirt pattern from Tropical Research. This is the purple uh, cotton spandex jersey that I was planning on making this planning on making this to go with the pink pants. You can see it here with the gray pants. Um, I don't love this top. I don't dislike this top. This purple fabric was really I purchased to make a knit muslin so it was never going to be a favorite. However, I love the pattern and I will definitely be making it again. So I'm thinking that maybe um, I do have some more French terry in my stash. I have a piece of white French terry. So I might make one of these to go with my pink corduroys instead of this. Anyways, so now I am off to the next segment of my fall mix, which will be the pink pants and probably this same shirt in white French terry. Okay. So the other thing I've been working on this week, you guys, is some loungewear. It has turned decidedly cooler here in Michigan in the last couple of weeks, and I found myself sort of lacking in cozy, uh, cute clothes to wear around the house. Especially since I spend a fair amount of time in my house, I like to wear stuff like that, but I don't want to look um, sloppy and, you know, uh, like I don't care, because then I feel like I don't care. So I pulled out a couple of uh, my older Japanese books. The first one is this one called Happy Homemade So Chic, which has been around for ages and ages. It is in English and in Japanese. And I made these sorrel pants that are on the front here. I'll show you a picture of them here. I made them in a French terry that I've had in my stash forever. Um, and I wasn't really gonna use it for anything else, so I used it for a muslin for these pants. I ended up taking four inches, one, two, three, four, eight inches, a total of eight inches out of the circumference of these pants. And you can see they still are plenty big. Again, this is not like, <laughs> it's not an ideal pant. It doesn't look great from the back, but here's the thing. There's a lot of fabric in this pant and it is a French terry. So it is, um, a little bulkier. I, it's not the ideal fabric for these. However, they are super cozy and super, super comfy. And I will definitely be wearing them around the house all winter, especially because I made this top to go over them. This top, so nobody will see that horrible backside. This top is from a different Japanese book. This one is newer and I got it more recently. I will link both of these books below if I can find them for you. Um, this pattern comes in like two sizes it's this one or I think it's just a shorter version of this one um, again a French terry that's been in my stash for a gazillion years um, and I wasn't going to use it for anything else so again this is sort of a wearable muslin but I'm pretty happy with the way this came out I uh, I will probably make this again but I won't make it quite as big I'll just cut down the uh, width a little bit and I think I have a couple of more um, sort of loungewear kind of things I'm going to work on for the next couple of weeks because, um, like I said, I just have a little bit of a uh, 
bare spot in my wardrobe as far as that goes. I also have a couple of other things to share with you guys this week. Um, what was it? Oh, here we go. Um, since I was feeling so much better this past week, I did spend a little time tooling around the internet and getting some other ideas for you guys. Um, Chris Wood Sews just came out with another new pattern. That one is called the Gemini Dress. I'll put a picture of it here. It's super cute. Um, you should look it up on Instagram and see the other makes because I've seen a few and they're really, really cute. I'm definitely, I definitely want to make this one. Look, uh, check Chris's um, Instagram because she, she has a couple um, versions of it on there that are really inspiring. Also, I think it was Karen that told me that alerted me to Merchant & Mills' new pattern. It's a jacket and coat pattern called the Sanda, S-A-N-D-A. Picture's right here. This also looks super cute. I do have some fabric for a coat and I was originally going to use it for the, um, I think it's called the September coat from Merchant & Mills. But now I'm thinking I might wanna make the Sanda and make it a jacket because I might get more use out of that. Um, anyways, I love that pattern. And while I was on the website, I noticed that they had a new um, overall uh, jumper, like not a, not overalls, um, but a, like pinafore, like an overall pinafore thing um, that I had not seen before. So that also might be new. Anyways, check out the new stuff at Merchant and Mills. The last thing is, um, I found this person on Instagram. Her account is called uh, Paper Bag Waste, and I will link to her account below. She had, I think she's a costume designer, but her whole feed is just photos of um, things that she's seen in fashion, like different garments she's seen on different websites or whatever. She posts the picture and then underneath it, she posts pattern suggestions for uh, to make that garment. She's got just a ton. Um, I don't know if you guys have already, if you, any of you already are familiar with her, you'll already know, but it, it's, it was really cool. I mean, I just scrolling through her feed, I could already see a couple of things that I would definitely want to make and her pattern suggestions I thought were really spot on. So definitely check her out as well. All right, guys, that's it for me this week. Until next time, I wish you all happy sewing.